gauche, dans le départ de cette séance, le point de vue de la ligne 04-15, start time 716, time for the run, 104. Race two of the BMW IBSF two-man bobsleigh World Cup at Snowy La Plagne in France in the shadow of Mont Blanc, the 1992 Winter Olympic track from the Albaville Games. It remains a challenge still to the drivers and the teams, and the weather and the altitude certainly don't make life much easier. The track is covered all the way down though, so despite the fact that snow is now falling, none will be falling in the track for our 19 sleds from 11 nations. Well, they will go in reverse order of their first heat performance, the fastest going last. And after the first heat, we have a top three covered by 1,400th of a second. Frank Del Duca with Hakim Abdul Sabor off uh, a 12th fastest start in the first run, drove superbly. Second off at the start of the race, they lie in third place, 1,400th off the lead. And they are 1,200th ahead of. Francesco Friedrich, the World Olympic champion. Mickey Vogt looking for an 11th career medal. He's got three silvers, seven bronzes already. He lies just three hundredths of a second off the lead. And the leader, well, if you watch the racing in Beijing, if you watch the World Championships, you might not be surprised to see that he's once more Johannes Lochner and Georg Fleischhauer. Their remarkable abilities, the fastest start, and the fastest run down the track combined to give them the slenderest of leads. Just two hundredths of a second in it. This could be very close indeed. <laughs> well, there you go. Top three covered by 1400s. Francesco Frugic definitely not out of the medals. Marcus Trichel probably is, but he's got a great battle behind him. Look, with Cedric Folador, Simon Freely, Mihai Tentea, and then a dead heat between Adam Amor and Patrick Baumgartner. So there's lots going on. There should be a lot of position changes. Borifan, Boris Van, the last to go in the run with the second fastest start for him and Alexandre Rieu, uh, Antoine Rieu. Uh, they are just outside the top 10. They could be very challenging as well. Where's well, Francesco Friedrich? In fact, that's not, that is, that's Alex Schuler. So uh, up at the top there with the rest of the team. Adam Zaleski on the left-hand side. He's uh, with uh, Dominic Zaleski. He's with uh, Dominic Dvorak in the first of our two sleds. Adam and Mikhail Dob uh, Dobsch are in the second sled. Got a couple of Chinese sleds in the field. And the kids are definitely enjoying the fresh snowfall. It's going to be good fun for them. The slopes open here in La Plania for the residents today. And uh, next weekend is the official opening of the season. So the ski lifts are all in operation. It was a slightly overcast morning. Cloud has come down over the mountains, as you can see, bringing fresh snowfall with it. There is plenty of snow out there. It was snowing uh, the last couple of days have been clear, but up until now, it's been a uh, fairly consistent snowfall. It's about knee high to waist high in most places here, just below uh, La Plan 1800. In the top part of the resort, La Plaine de Mille, 2,000 metres above sea level. So our start list then features, first off, our Polish rookies. Radoslav Sobczyk, 
and Severin Sosna. They will go first. Jakob's calendar of Latvia next. Then the Dobesh duo. Matija Variolo, Dominic Dvorak, Sun Kai Chi, Emil Tsipoulis, Lee Chun Jan, Boris Van, just outside the top 10. And Adam and Isam Amour are in 10th place after the first of the two heats. Then we get down to Patrick Baumgartner, Mihai Tentea, Seaman Freely, Cedric Follador, Marcus Tricol, and Francesco Friedrich. And the final three sleds, Frank Del Duca, Mickey Vogt, and Hansi Lochner. Well, there's a few fans on hand here this weekend to watch the action. They were treated to a very entertaining monobob race this morning. And I don't think that the end of this race is going to be any less edge of the seat. Making their debut this weekend for Poland, Radoslav Sobczyk and Severin Sosna. The Polish duo, 25-year-old driver, 20-year-old brakeman, both brand new to the World Cup. 6.22 their getaway. They started 6.19 in the first heat. Sobczyk only been driving a couple of seasons now. Started in November 2021. So he is short on overall experience. Definitely short on experience here in La Plan. But he made a very good fist of his first run. Certainly no disappointment, I don't think, to be making the cut in your first race. Whether he'll fare a little better in Innsbruck remains to be seen. Lots of drivers know that track well, so it's going to be tougher to break in. A little late flop there as it comes down. Out of 18, little tap down to 19. All of this taking a little bit of speed out of the sled. First run was a 61.33, and that is a 61.09. Big improvement for him. And that's very good news indeed. Not quite as quick as the next sled we'll see managed in the first heat, but an improvement by three tenths of a second. And that is all vital learning going in to the grey matter. One day he'll come back here and he'll have first-hand knowledge of the track. But that little slip getting in definitely won't have helped his confidence, his concentration into the first couple of corners. Got the nose down too early there, then tried to release it, and the back of the sled was waving around. Trying to hold a low, constant radius through 16. Well, there you go. Made their World Cup debut successfully. Got down and done. So, welcome to the fold, Radoslav Sobczyk and Severin Sosna. Next up, more familiar names. Jakob's calendar of Latvia with Breitman, Ivo Kleinbergs. And their target will try and move up from 18th place after the first heat. Their targets are Adam Debesh of the Czech Republic and Mikhail the Breitman, just 600s faster than the Latvian duo in the first run. 6.10 start compared to 6.09 in the first heat. So it looks like the quarter of a century old start record will remain intact. Set when the rules were different, sled weights and so on were different. So you can have lighter sleds and bigger crews. But nevertheless, it has yet to be matched. A bad looking run from Jakobs Kalander. Now a full second in front. First heat was a 60.63. Is this going to chip away into the 59s? Looks like he might just about have enough speed on board to do so. Ooh, that's probably done it, though. It's going to be low 60s. Across the line, 60.21. Yeah, don't go yet. <laughs> Wait until the camera cuts and you see the other guys on screen again and then leave the leader's box. These are all things that eventually you will, you will get to know as you do more races. Before you get to World Cup, unless you've raced in the World Championships or the Olympics, there are no TV cameras and so none of these things actually matter until, well, the one day that they do for the first time. Little tap there, there's some little lump there and obviously an expansion joint just as the track changes. And there's a little lump of ice. If you're right over by the right wall, kicks the sled into a skid. So Jakob's calendar on the left is big Evo Kleinbergs. 
Little Mountains. Yeah, right. And their targets next up, Adam and Mikkel Dobesh. Now, they share a surname, but as far as they're aware, not related. Unless they're winding me up, and it wouldn't be the first time that Cruz have done that. Hello, Mickey Vogt. But Adam Dobesh, Mikkel Dobesh. Really good start from this duo. 6 0 1, fifth fastest getaway. And he's starting like that, and only a couple of years driving experience, then they can only get better. Nice low from Mikhail as well. 6 0 4, like everybody else, to a 300 slower. Starts up at just under 1800 metres above sea level. It's the highest track that we race at, higher even than San Moritz. You always think it's breathless in San Moritz. Very hard work for the sprinters here. 1900s up. He's only 600s in front of Jakob's calendar from the first heat. So he's adding to that advantage, but it's coming back a little now. Lowest speed than calendar and Subchik. Gap's coming right back down. If the speed doesn't improve at the bottom here, he's not going to keep his nose in front. Second best speed, it's going to be very close. I don't think he's got enough. Oh, it might be enough. Calendar was squirrely there. He drops behind, but Calendar was ebbing speed away. Not enough. 60.32. So Jakob's Calendar stays in the leader's box. Whatever the check for Drat, Drat and Double Drat is. Despite that tap and a skid between 18 and 19, Calendar still had just enough speed on board. The mistakes were a little earlier on in the run for Adam Dobesh. Some of those fast transitions in the first third of the track, just the sled meeting them at the wrong angle. A tap and a skid here as well, not adding to the speed in any way. So Adam Dobesh slips to second with 16 to go. Adam Besh, previous two 10th place finishes in his rookie season last year, so not going to match his previous best. Mattia Variola in his 29th two-man race. His first was in January 2020 in Koenigsegg. Didn't race here, though, in February 2020. He's got new boy Fabio Batti behind him. And big Fabio, 28 years of age, making his two-man World Cup debut here today. Has raced with Mattia in four man on a handful of occasions. 609 start. That's top 10 starting from this crew. 2400s in front. They had 2300s over Jakob's calendar from the first heat. Added one hundredth extra at the start. Still 2400s up. Relatively quiet so far. No major mistakes. Gap is coming down though. Speed is not there. Ooh. Oh, big skid. Big, big trouble. Had to really haul it around there. Off six, down through seven, eight, and nine. And that is going to really punish him now. All the speed goes when you put the runners sideways. Never mind hitting the wall. That does so much damage to your speed. Across the line. Third only, I'm afraid, 60.71. One tiny little error. Jakob's calendar stays in the leader's box. Mattia Variola drops behind him and Adam Debesh. Ah, yep. He would have been hoping to improve a little on his first run. Henrik Dvorak is only 1600s in France. That's a, a gainable target on this track. Take a look here, hauls it down early, hits the wall. Sled still articulated, fully broadside, touching both walls and then whipping on to the turn. That's really hard. And then here, eight, nine, not going his way either. And all that speed ripped out of the sled early on. So Dominic Dvorak now trying to hold off Jakob's calendar. And Dvorak with a 39 hundredths of a second advantage. Dominic Zaleski behind him. The Czech 100 metre record holder. 
Both these men extremely quick over the flat. Certainly substantially less than 100 metres, even the way that Zaleski runs it down into turn one. 607. And that's three tenths of uh, 300 quicker than their first heat. Nobody's done that so far. Adam and Michal Dobesh started 604 a couple of minutes a couple of minutes ago, so two checks left, but very good starting speed. Nice looking run so far from Dvorak. Looking to try and regain some of that pre-Olympic season form that he had. He was in the shots of the podium a lot of the time. Finishing third overall in the two-man World Cup in an Olympic year. What's he going to do here? Half a second up. This is a really nice looking run. 5400s at 60.06. Two tenths quicker than his first heat. 60.06 would have left him two spots further up than he was after the first heat. He needs to be down in the mid to low 59s to really be at the sharp end of the field. But they're starting well. They look fit and healthy. We know Dominic's got driving ability. Doesn't have so much knowledge of this track. Maybe that's just part of the equation here. Wait and see what happens when we get to Innsbruck next week. <laughs> Dominic Dvorak leads Jakobs Kellender and Adam Dubesh. Czech Republic sandwich with Latvia in the middle. Five down, 14 to go. 14th after the first of our two heats, race two of the BMW IBSF two-man bobsleigh World Cup in La Plagne in France. Sun Kai-Chi and Cheng Heng of China. Now these pair outdrove their start, started 6.13 in the first heat, only the 16th fastest out of our 19 sleds. They came down in 14th place, he's going to have to do more of the same. 6.08 is a much better start. It's actually 100 slower than the sled that they are chasing, or who, are, who is chasing them. Dominic Dvorak, the Czech Republic, our current leader. He only had 100 in hand. So it was dead level as he sat down. He divorced up with that tiny little bit of extra speed at the start from Dominic Zaleski behind him. Looks as though the Chinese sled was just very slightly falling back. There's only a hundredth in it. There's only nine hundredths in it now. A couple of good steers to keep the speed alive at the bottom will definitely help. Second fastest, but Dvorak was quickest at the bottom. That's a nice exit, hard to argue with that. Clean through 19, oh, rubs the wall in 20, and drops into second place, 60.25. So third fastest run. Dominic Dvorak, 60.06, is the fastest. And Jakobs Kellender, 60.21, also quicker than Sun Kai Chi. So Sun slips a spot. 11th place finish, his best in World Cup racing in two-man. Finished in 14th place in the Olympic Winter Games in the two-man competition in Beijing in February. February 2002, uh, 22, that is, not this February. So Dominic Dvorak leading the race as we get to the second of our Latvian sleds. Emil Tsipoulis with Mats Miknis. And the balance of experience here very much with Mats Miknis. 13th start for Emil Tsipoulis. He lines up 13th place as well. Funnily enough, he was 13th in the start. And finished in 13th place. 5.99 is the fastest start so far. 400s quicker than they managed in the first heat. Corner six. Two little panoramic shots here for the fans. And as ever at a bobsleigh track, great ability to get very close 
and the fast moving machinery really appreciate the speed when you're right up by the track. 100 kilometers an hour in a car doesn't sound like a lot. When you're head first on ice or when you're in a bobsled on ice, it really is a lot. Still with the slender advantage, opening it up now. Starting to really stretch his legs ahead of Dominic Dvorak. 2100 in the first heat becomes twice that, four tenths in the second heat. So 59.87, little punch of the air from Sanders Prusis. He's the head of the coaching setup for Latvia and Bobsled. And we will return to Latvia after the Christmas break. Lillehammer Latvia, the kind of Nordic duo. Again, they've got to be looking at that. We saw that with Ivo Kleinbergs and Jakob's calendar. And Mats Miknes, his 51st two-man World Cup race. He's got a World Championship two-man medal as well. Can't be left in the sled. That's all the energy going up. Not all of it, but some of it going up instead of forward. Emil Tsipoulis of Latvia leading the race as we close in on our top 10 sleds. In 12th place, uh, place ahead of the Latvian was Lee Chun-Jan with Wu ching si behind him. The slightly more experienced of the two Chinese drivers. This is his 17th two-man World Cup race. And 25-year-old Wu in his seventh. He was the brakeman for Sun Kai-Chi. Uh, Sipoulis on the left, Miknis on the right. Yeah, Bregman race was a loping run. He's got like some sort of racehorse. Bregman Wu race with Sun Kai Chi right the way through the Winter Games in Beijing and paired up with Lee after that. So last year was their first season together. It's on the road. It's been productive so far. They have sort of established themselves ahead of Sun at the moment. Finished in eighth place in the season opening race in Beijing. Sun was 11th, so they have the upper hand. They were better at home, and at the moment, they're better on the away leg as well. Good speed as well, 108.1 kilometers an hour. Dominic Dvorak was only 107.4 at that speed, and that was the quickest speed. So this is very good from the Chinese sled, and this should be enough to let him take the lead, not by much, but it should be enough. Not enough. 59.94. The speed was misleading, or perhaps not just quite high enough. And we were a little early on the brakes. Again. Did they just do it to make Yanis Minin's run? I don't know. I'm saying not. Take a look here at the way the sled rises, and then he hauls it off much too late on the way into the curve, much too late on the way out, and so he really had to rip it off the turn. That gives him all sorts of trouble lower down. So mistakes are very easy to make when you're traveling at high speed on ice, particularly on a track you don't know well. Now then, this was quite a debut as well for Boris Van, Monaco brakeman turned driver, with Antoine Rieu behind him. Antoine in his second two-man World Cup start. That's him on the right of your shot. And Boris making his first start. Break for Rudy Rinaldi into eighth place. Last time we raced here in World Cup, but Boris driving now for the very first time at the senior level. 5.97 getaway, they started 5.94 in the first heat. So just second fastest start, just. And Boris, we always knew when he was behind Rudy Rinaldi, he was an absolute start monster. And the job for Antoine Rue is very hard. You've got to try and add to that while also making weight. And that's a key element as well in it. Not just the balance of how well they work together, being able to get them both in the same sled. Eighth best speed. Still 1,300s up, still 1,100s up. Boris Vat looking to move himself up into the top 10. Oh, I don't know, little skid there. 
tucks his head, all the tricks coming in. Bruno Mijon and Max Robert are teaching him well across the line, 400s back. That is very disappointing. What a shame. You don't want to slip a place, but what a start to a career. Top 12 finish guaranteed on his World Cup debut for Boris Vaughan. And again, I will repeat, he was in bed two days ago with a fever of 41 degrees. The very last thing he wants to do is come out in the freezing cold and drive bobsleds. And unlike me, who doesn't have that fever, but has got a rotten cold, he can't just go to the pharmacy and take lots of stuff. Now Bruno Mijon saw the mistake. <laughs> Bruno Max pairing up with the Monaco team and the French crews. It slipped away a little. Ten to go. Emma Sapoulis leads from Lee Chun Jan and Boris Va in third place. Just four hundredths of a second. Cover them all. Well, looking out of my window, still snow coming down. Latvians getting more warm clothes on because, yeah, funnily enough, single layer of lycra really isn't that warming at all. Nice to see some fans out here as well. Probably almost all locals, not too many visitors yet in the village or in the villages here in La Plan. Essentially three separate resorts, La Plan 1600, La Plan 1800, La Plan 2000. And uh, a whole host of very inviting ski pistes in this area. Not too far down the valley from resorts like Teen, Leger, lots and lots of fabulous ski area. And a few fans and a few athletes up at the top as well watching the action. The great thing here with this track is that it is covered for every single centimetre of the way. Covered at the start, covered at the finish, and covered all the way down over every corner. And that means that it is a, well, not quite a 365 day a year track, but it is a, a track that is never stopped by the weather. So there you saw Big Boris Matt. 400s off the lead, dropped two spots, unfortunately, with that run. And your leader, Emil Tsipoulis, on the left-hand side. Mats Mignis on the right-hand side. Just checking out the standings. Well, for anybody coming down now, if they don't beat this duo, the chances are they're going to drop at least three spots because if they don't beat them, they're unlikely to be less than 400s behind. Well, maybe they will. Let's see. Fans watching the action at the start here in La Plania in France as we get into the top 10 run. And in equal ninth place, we have a German and an Italian sled. German brothers, Adam and Isam Amour, racing together for only the second time in the World Cup. They raced together in the World Championships as well. 5.97, another strong start. They were third fastest in the field with a 5.96 in the first heat. And Adam Amour, Doing a good job on the D-rings, driving the sled down. Adam, 22 years of age, Junior World Championship gold medalist last season. His 30-year-old big brother, Isam, has been in and out of the German squad over the last few seasons, but really working hard throughout the summer to make sure that he's absolutely in perfect condition to join his brother in the World Cup squad. 2700s up, best speed so far. Tying with Lee Chun Jan for the top speed. This is the real challenge now for Patrick Baumgartner and for the sled in front of them, Mihai Tenter, Romania. This is Adam Amore aiming for the top six, not the top 10. 59.58. He came down 59.85 in the first heat. That's a big improvement. 59.58 would have left him in fifth position in the first run. That is the fifth fastest trip down the track today. That's a great second run from Adam Amor. Well, brother Isam took a silver medal, breaking for Christoph Harfer. 
in Altenburg back in 2021 in the COVID season. It's his eighth two-man World Cup start, his second with his brother. They raced together in Segulda in February to tie Brad Hall for fourth. And he knew then that this was a good combination. And that puts a lot of pressure on this man, or these men, Patrick Baumgartner and his brakeman, Robert Metzia. 28-year-old Carabinieri, Patrick Baumgartner. 24-year-old brakeman, Robert Metzia. Let's see what they got at the start. 6.03. They started 6.08 in the first heat. So they have improved by 500. Losing less time to Adam and Isama Moore. Nevertheless, still in the red as they sat down by six hundredths of a second. And the next split might tell us everything. Second best speed, only seven hundredths back. And Moore was only fastest right at the bottom of the track. Through the final speed trap was where Adam and Moore was fastest. And now Baumgartner is quicker. The Italian sled is faster. He's going to close the gap down. He's not 900s. And Moore has driven really well here. Baumgartner keeps a nice, even parabola. Second best speed out of 1300s. He's not going to hang on. He's going to be second to Adam Amore. 59.83. It was a couple of hundreds better than his first heat. The speed showed that it should have been a little better than that. Apache Baumgartner and Robert Matea will be guaranteed at least a 10th place finish. <laughs> Finished in fourth place in the two-man in Beijing at the start of the season three weeks ago. And then in the four man took the silver medal. He had a great weekend in China. Less knowledge of this track. And that hasn't helped him. So, next potential victim of the Amor brothers will be Mihai Tentea and Georg Yordash. 20 year old Bregman making his two man World Cup debut. Mihai Tentea in his 26th two man race almost all of which have been in one of three tracks. Innsbruck, Altenburg or Winterberg. So let's see what Mihai has got. Didn't race here in 2020 in the World Cup race. And this is really his first time since early days in Europe Cup at this track. Tiny margin over Isam Amour. Uh, Adam Amour of only three hundredths of a second. That's all disappeared at the start. They started 6.12. So 1,500 slower than the Amour brothers. And that means he's got to really go strongly. He was the first sled on ice. Had the best of the fresh spritz on the track. Doesn't have any advantage now in terms of track prep. And Amor's run is looking better and better. And in fact, I'm not sure that Mihai Tentea is going to stay ahead of Patrick Baumgartner. Only had 300s ahead of the Italian and the German from the first heat. He's definitely going to fall victim to Adam Amor. And it's going to be very close with Patrick Baumgartner. Baumgartner's 2,500s back. Tentea at the line. Second or third? Third it is. 2,900s. 59.90. <laughs> So Adam Amour, Isam Amour leading the race with seven to go. And the next couple of sleds are also potential victims. Hard take on in that eight nine transition there for Mihai Tentea. Watch the runner tips here as he starts to bring the sled down and then just relaxes the steer, just a little steer, then hold and let it go. And there's his new brakeman, Georg Jordash, making his World Cup two-man debut. Well, next up, and definitely in the sights of the Amor brothers, only 500s faster in the first heat, Seaman Friedley and Andreas Haas. And they did not start as quickly 
as the Amor brothers either. 6.03, their first start. They need to get it down to six or below to avoid losing their lead as they sit down. 6.06, they don't, they're 400s behind. That's not even as quick as their first start. So Seaman Friedley and Andreas Haas now relying on Friedley's experience to try and drive them back into the lead. He's only 400s behind. Have they got better velocity? 500s back. This is going to be tight as well. Second place, Patrick Baumgartner is a quarter second behind Adam Amore. So at the moment, it is between Seaman Friedley and Adam Amore for seventh position at least. Friedley's dropping back though. Gaps out to 1100s. And on the splits, he's in third place behind Baumgartner at this stage. If he's very clean at the bottom, it'll be second. It's third, 59.92. So 200 slower. Adam Amor and Isam Amor are leading the race. Somebody somewhere will know, and, and we, we may not need to, we almost certainly won't need to know today, but at some stage we will know. When was the last time, if ever, brothers won in bobsleigh? I don't know, I, I, uh, I can't think, mind you, I can't think of much today, but I can't think when that might have happened. Lee Johnson, he's king of stats, he'll know that stuff. Well, look, here we go. He's Sam on the left, Adam on the right there. What a great combination, what a great opportunity to compete for your country in a team with your brother. I mean, that's just fantastic, isn't it? And they're making the most of it. And actually, with their second heat, I think that puts pressure on Cedric Folador as well. The further we get up the order, the bigger the gaps are, but only 900s of a second, that's nothing. That's absolutely nothing. Cedric Folador with Gregory Jones, 6.11 the start, compared to 5.97 of the Amor brothers. So they sit down 500s back. I definitely think a top five is on here for Adam and Isam Amor. And it may be more, 900s back. The gap is opening up. Uh, the athletes have been saying the track's held up really well all week long. Skeleton athletes were saying it's barely noticeable that the bobsleds have been on. The speed has always been there, but it has been a bit colder overnight earlier in the week. It's snowing now, so it's moderately warm, a bit humid. That means the refrigeration can make the ice a little stickier as the race progresses. 1,300s back, he's not going to get there. 2,100s back, it is second place for Cedric Folador. The Amor brothers hanging out in the leader's box. 59.88, four fastest run for Cedric Folador and Greg Jones. Off the 11th fastest start, I mean, that's a really good bit of driving from Cedric Folador. They're being comprehensively outstarted by Adam and Isama Moore, and that's not helped. And the gaps in this sort of six to 12 group were absolutely tiny. And that's why the big step forward taken by Adam and Moore is having such a, a culling effect on his rivals. So next up then, as Adam Amore leads with five to go, is Marcus Treichel of Austria. Marcus Treichel, top five after the first heat. But 3,300s away from the medals. As in the monobob race this morning, the top three very close together. Let's see what we can get here. Sasha Stepan had a good start with Marcus in the first heat. 6.04, that's excellent stuff for the Austrians. Marcus Treichel really needs a good drive here. 700 slower than Adam Amore. 
and Isamamor at the start, but they've still got 1100s in the bank. A little skid and a tap. The speed's gone away. The next clock, at the best, they'll be tied. They're in the red already. It's another scalp for the Amor brothers, unless he can work some magic further down. Marcus Treichel looking to try and hang on in the top six, but that's not going to work at the moment. He's dropping four spots on the splits. Little tap down there between 18 and 19. He's going to cross the line in sixth place with five to go. He's gone from fifth to what was basically likely to be outside the top 10. Gone completely the wrong way, 60.11. 4,100 slower than his first run. Well, that's the pressure coming to bear. And that 8-9 transition, pretty hard. As a result, the flop afterwards. And then there'll be a skid. Drops down low and late in the middle of 16. And then has to bring it down a little harder than he would like at the end. Sasha Stepan, the brakeman in his third two-man World Cup, the first outside of Sigulda. Now then, four to go. Germany will lead after this, but will it be Adam Amor and Isam Amor, or will it be the magic duo, Francesco Friedrich and Torsten Marcus? The two-man Olympic champions lost out in Beijing in two-man and four-man. 2,600s off the lead. 1,200s out of a medal, 597, 400s of a second quicker than their first start. And so that gives them a handy advantage because they match the start of Adam and Isam Amor. 3,600s up, that's what his first heat advantage was, that's what it remains, 4,300s, not as fast. The sled is looking a little wayward here. Friedrich has won the last two World Cup races here in 2015 and 2020. He won on his Europe Cup debut on this track as well. 2015, uh, 2012, I beg your pardon. I'm not sure he's coming away with the gold medal today. Something very screwy is going to happen if that's to be the case. 4,800s up from 3,600s up. He's only added 12, 1,500s after the first heat. So 59-45, finally, he unseats Adam and Isam Amour from the leader's box, but they are guaranteed at least a top five finish in fifth place. Friedrich leads with three to go. Will he take a medal here? Well, the worst he's ever finished in a two-man race here is second. One second place in Europe Cup, one gold and two World Cup golds. Those are his four race results here in two man. Doesn't look shoddy either in four man, his record on this track. Torsten Margis, as far as I can make out, his first ever two man race in La Plan. I saw Alex Schuller quite wrapped up. I wonder whether Schuller is not feeling 100%. Didn't look too bad the other day when they came in for their headshots, but. We'll see. OK, three to go. If you're watching in Lake Placid, in Park City, or anywhere else in the US, do not turn your head for the next couple of minutes. This could be a very big day for Frank Del Duca and Hakeem Abdul Sabur. Frank, 32 years of age, his sixth race driving a two-man bobsleigh in World Cup. Won two races in two-man in. Lake Placid just last month in the North America's Cup. This is a very different kettle of fish. 6.09 start. They started 6.08 in the first heat. Del Duca, the second sled on the ice. And now he's third from last. The changing room emptying around him. That does strange things to drivers, but this is looking nice so far. Compared to the experience of the man who's trying to beat Francesco Friedrich, he really is a novice. 1,500s back. He only had 1,200s over Friedrich from the first heat. Third best speed, though. This might yet be a medal. Oh, big height from Frank Del Duca. Trying to let the sled fly. 
1100s back, only the 10th best speed it's showing. It might be enough. Second at the line, might yet get him a medal. He's second at the line, guaranteed no worse than fourth. Friedrich is guaranteed a medal. That is a big, big run from Frank Del Duca. Really can't overstate how good that is. Previous best was in Park City, a track he knows well. He claimed seventh place. What a race. What a race, absolutely right. Top three after the first heat. They got us. It's Friedrich. He gets everyone. But it doesn't necessarily mean there's not a medal yet coming. We could yet see upsets. And also, Friedrich's been racing on this track since 2012. Frank Del Duca hasn't been in the sport since 2012. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Hey, Seb, I hope you're taking care of the house while I'm gone. I got oh, yeah. One year old at home. Clear up off that party, Seb. One year olds make a mess. So, Frank Del Duca and the man mountain that is Hakim Abdul Sabor lie in second. Francesco Friedrich, Torsten Margis lead. Two to go. Now, for Mickey Vogt and Sandro Mikkel, it's not about looking over the shoulder at Friedrich. They were three hundreds away from a first ever win in the first heat. That's what it's about. 594, big start, 597 in the first heat. So they're bringing it down to what they expect to see from Hansi Lochner and Georg Fleischauer. And now, Vogt has got to outdrive not just Friedrich, but Lochner as well. The top two in the Olympic Games, the top two in the World Championships last year. He's got to beat them both. Who's the bronze medalist in Samaritz in two man? He's got a 3,500s lead. He is driving away from Francesco Friedrich. 3,800s. Is this Mickey Vogt's shout for the gold medal here? This is putting enormous pressure, not on Francesco Friedrich, but on Hansi Lochner. This could be enough for Mickey Vogt to win it. Across the line, 59.25. 200 of a second slower than Lochner managed in the first heat. 100 quicker than Mickey managed. Guaranteed at least a silver medal, the fourth of his career. 94 start. Fear Neunzig, that's what they're told. They gave it everything. They're in the medals, they're on the podium. It's Vogt, Friedrich and Del Duca. I think Frank's chances of a medal are gone, but never say never. That was a big run from Mickey Vogt. A little too much of a wave there in 16. Let's see what Hansi Lochner brings to the party. Right now, they've got their hands on a silver, but have they got enough to take the gold? Well, we've said it before, we'll say it again. This duo have never lost a two-man race since they started together. Six races in two-man, Georg Fleisch has had with Hansi Lochner, six gold medals in the World Cup. They've also won the two-man world championships. How long does the streak go on? Fastest start in the first heat was there. Oh, hits the wall! 591 in the first heat, 592 then. But he slams it into the wall on the driver's left. Is that what it takes? If he recovers from that, then Hansi Lochner deserves every bit of the gold medal. But right now, I think he might be in trouble. A tenth back. Mickey Vogt all but matched him in the first heat, all but matched him in the second. Hannes Lochner may not continue his winning form this season. Took the gold in two-man and four-man in Beijing. The gap's growing, 1,200s back. That vital speed at the start rubbed off in the impact with the wall. Second best speed, bringing it back, 1,100s. He can't do it from here, he can't do it from here. It's gonna be gold for Mickey Vogt in Switzerland. Silver for Johannes Lochner and bronze for Francesco Friedrich. Their first win together on the right, Mickey Vogt, on the left, Sandro Mikkel. Silver medal for Hansi Lochner and Georg Fleischauer. 
Well, the streak has to end at some stage. And it's at the start. Watch Hansi load. Feet go in. Drops in. Looks good to hear. But as they come out of the drive lines, something, either one or the other of them, the sled kicks left, hits the wall. <laughs> well, they knew they had to bring the A game because Mickey Votes and Sandro Mikkel did, and they claim their first win. And that now means three races out of the last three we have had first time winners. La Plania has certainly just shuffled the deck a little. Mickey Vogt, Sandro Mikkel, claiming gold in the two-man race for Switzerland. A big result for Sandro Mikkel and Mickey Vogt, his driver. And Mickey, well, he claimed his first ever World Cup medal here in February 2020. It was a bronze. And now he returns to the track and goes two better, takes gold. And what about Frank Del Duca, fourth place? Great drive. Adam and Moore, fifth place. Fantastic stuff from him as well. Disappointment from Marcus Tricol, dropping from fifth to tenth. But that tight group outside the top four, Adam and Moore just overhauled them all with a stunning second drive. Fantastic stuff from him. And good to see new names making their debut as well. Boris Vaughan, he'll be a star in the future. 13th place in his first drive. And for the Poles as well, great to see Subchik out uh, making his World Cup debut. Radoslav Subchik and Severin Sosna. And that is it for the two-man race. Mickey Vogt and Sandra Mikkel claiming victory. Will Hansi Lochner restore normal service in the four-man race? Well, you'll have to wait till Sunday afternoon to find out because Sunday morning it will be women's bobsleigh. Racing starts at nine for the women, eight GMT. And for the four-man race, <laughs> a bit of bromance in the leaders' box and why not? The four-man race, we will start again at 13.30 Central European time. Hansi Lochner still leads the World Cup standings. Mickey Vogt jumps to second, just 10 points behind him. Francesco Friedrich in third, Patrick Baumgartner ahead of Simon Friedrich and Cedric Follador. So the Swiss with three drivers in the top six in the BMW IBSF World Cup rankings for two men. Well, it certainly shuffled the pack a little here, hasn't it? This race weekend. And a great result for Mickey Vogt and Sandro Mikkel. And that is it for the two man. Join us tomorrow for women's bob and four man starting at nine local eight GMT 0300, I'm sorry, Eastern. Till then, from the IBSF TV crew here in La Plania, Martin Avon saying thank you for joining us and for putting up with my croaky voice. We'll see you tomorrow, voice or no voice. Bye for now.